Hello everyone and welcome to Bob's Art Nook. I am Bob Pallas, Adult Services Librarian at the Morton Grove Public Library. You may also know me from past events I may have coordinated in the form of concerts, presentations, and movies, munches, and more. Um, welcome. I hope all of you are doing great. I hope you're, doing, you're, you're staying safe, healthy, washing hands, staying indoors as much as possible so that one day we can all get together, hopefully soon, and converse, smile, and have it be like it was. So again, thank you for coming. Uh, today, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than what you're normally used to, but it's something that's very near and dear to my heart, uh, and that is drawing. Drawing has been a hobby, passion of mine since before I can remember, uh, and disclaimer, I am not a professionally trained artist, <laughs> so don't expect any uh, specialized terminology. Uh, but I do hope to give you a little insight as to some of the methods that I use uh, to create certain drawings. Today I'm going to be showing you how to draw faces. And all that's required in terms of tools is a pencil, a number two pencil. Um, I prefer a mechanical pencil because it helps me sharpen the edges in, in my drawings. But you don't have to worry about that. So a number two pencil and a sharpener if you have one, an eraser. Let's not forget the eraser, or you could use the eraser on top of the pencil, but that'll do. Uh, yeah, so sit back, relax, enjoy the show. If you're up to it, draw along with me. Let's get started. Let's start with a female face. The first thing you want to do is decide what face shape you want to draw. You can choose from round, oval, heart-shaped, or squarish. The easiest is probably oval, so let's do that today. You'll want to start with small, short strokes to create your curve. If you start by making your lines light enough, you can always go back and erase sections of them and readjust your curve. And remember, it's okay to make mistakes. Artists follow the path that the artwork leads them on, so you may have to revise as you go along. Now I'll be starting the top part of the hair. I apologize that this is a bit off camera, but you'll get the idea for how high the curve goes as I start to come lower. Now that I have the basic head shape formed, I can erase certain parts of it if I want to make it look like the hair is laying over it. Adding this light shading at the edge of the hairline and in the part adds definition to the hair. The first facial feature I like to draw is the nose. This way you can find the center of the face and place the eyes and everything else around it. Some people prefer to draw the nose directly below the eyes, but if you pay attention you'll notice that noses actually start at the eyes and proceed downward on the face. Now that I've placed the lips on the face, I notice that the face shape needs adjusting again to make the lips look centered. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You'll want to make the neck start at about the midway point of the lips, but you can always adjust and make it start lower, depending on your face shape. You'll want to shade in the eyes a bit, but leaving a little light at the center to mimic the pupil. 
and that is the female face. Now for the male face, I'm going to try another technique for the face shape. I'm going to make a grid with one center vertical line and three horizontal lines as a guide. I'm drawing them very lightly because I plan to erase them later. In each quadrant of the grid, you'll want to mirror what is on the opposite side. This will give you an even face without having to make many adjustments. In the second quadrants from the top, you'll place the two eyebrows toward the higher part of the quadrants. The nose can straddle right over the center line, and you'll have to decide the size and shape. The mouth can cross over the center line in the third quadrants. With the male face, you'll want to draw more pronounced eyebrows and bones in the face, as I did here with the cheekbones. One of the great things about pencils is that you can create shading by using your finger to lightly smudge the drawing. Just like when I drew the female face, I will use some shading at the hairline to add definition, but since this guy has shorter hair, it'll be less shading. For the male neck, you can start somewhere under the lips, but you'll want to make it wider than the female neck. Now of course I made this guy very rugged and chiseled, so the big neck works. However, you don't always have to draw guys this way. That's the beauty of this, and you can make any adjustments you like to achieve any look. Since I'm almost done, I'll go ahead and erase those guidelines I started with. And here we'll add some more smudging for the 5 o'clock shadow. There you have it, the male face. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I draw two types of faces. Remember you can always change and mess around with these methods and basic shapes as much as you'd like. There are no wrong ways to draw, so get out there or stay in there and get creative.